A few years ago, I built this Murphy bed. Well, I'm building another one right now and I'm gonna build it with you. Let's go. Over the past few years, I have received hundreds, maybe even thousands of emails and messages asking if I had plans or even a how-to video on this Murphy bed. Well, I finally got an opportunity to build another one and I'm gonna take you along for the journey. The first step is to build the actual bed itself. That way we know how much space we're gonna have on each side. Because this is going to be wall to wall, we're gonna have cabinets on both sides of the Murphy bed. This particular bed is going to be a full size, so we're gonna get the frame of this thing put together first. Also, because I'm gonna be painting this entire thing white, I'm gonna be using three quarter inch birch plywood for our header and our footer. With both the header and footer in place, I'm gonna move on to attach both side rails. All four of these outside pieces are designed to keep the mattress in place while it's moving up and down. With all of those in place, I'm going to temporarily move the bed frame out of the way. That way I can lay down two sheets of three quarter inch plywood. These are gonna be the face of the bed. So that's what you're actually gonna see when the bed is in the up position. With a little bit of glue and screws, I'm gonna attach the bed frame to the face. And then I'm gonna add two sheets of quarter inch plywood to the top side of the bed frame. These are gonna be what the mattress actually sits on. One of the most asked questions is, do I sell plans for this bed build? And the answer is no. Well, the reason I don't sell them is because if you buy this easy DIY Murphy bed kit, it comes with plans, cut lists, and exactly how to assemble the bed. And if you're wondering, no, this is not a sponsored post. I just like using this Murphy bed kit because it's easy to use and it comes with great instructions. Now back to the bed, because we used three quarter inch plywood, our edges are a little rough. So we're gonna use some edge banding to cover up all of our rough edges before we send this thing to the paint room. The edge banding actually has a glue on the back side of it. So when you heat it up with the iron, it melts the glue and causes it to stick to the edge of the wood. When the glue cools and dries, it forms a super strong bond to the wood. The edge banding is typically a little bit wider than the thickness of the plywood, so I like to use a razor blade to cut off the excess. Now they do make a specific tool for this, which works excellent, especially if you've never used edge banding before. After that, I like to give it a nice sand and then it is done. Check out that edge. Definitely night and day in comparison to what it started out as. Now we're moving on to the two side cabinets that go on each side of the Murphy bed. And just like the bed portion, we're gonna be using birch plywood to build the carcasses of the side cabinets. And yes, if you're not familiar with woodworking and cabinetry, we call the main framework of the cabinet a carcass. After that's built, we're gonna move on to the face frame. I'm gonna use pocket holes to construct the face frame. They're a really fast and user-friendly way to assemble your woodworking projects, especially face frames. And face frame is another term you might not be too familiar with if you're not into woodworking. A face frame is basically just a border that attaches to the cabinet carcass. This creates something of a picture frame look for the front of your cabinet. And using these pocket holes to assemble the face frame all in one piece helps me ensure that this is nice and square. That way when I attach it to the cabinet, we know that our cabinet is also square. So with a little bit of wood glue and some strategically placed screws on the back side, our cabinets are done. So yesterday we finished up both cabinets that go on each side of the Murphy bed. Today we're gonna be working on the cabinet doors. We want these doors to be inset, which means they sit inside flush with the face frame. That way our sliding bookshelves don't hit the doors when they're opening and closing. So we're gonna make these doors a quarter inch smaller than the opening. So we wanna be 14 by 27 and a quarter. To construct our cabinet doors, I'm gonna be using poplar for our rails and styles. Poplar is a great wood, especially if you're painting your project. It takes paint very well and sands nice and smooth. I typically go with a width of two and a half inches for the rails and styles. Then we're gonna head over to the router table to route out the tongue and groove portion. That way it can accept a quarter inch panel. We're just going with regular shaker style doors. The bits that I'm using here are from a company called Whiteside and I've been using these for over two years and they're still pretty good. They're starting to leave a little bit of burn mark so I'll probably have to replace them soon. Next, we're gonna head over to the table saw and the miter saw to cut the quarter inch panel that we're gonna use for the doors. When you're gluing up cabinet doors, you really only wanna add glue on the ends here on the tongue portion. This is gonna to allow the wood to be able to expand and contract if needed. 
So I'm going to let these sit in the clamps overnight and come back the next day. We're going to work on sanding. If you don't have a drum sander and you do a lot of cabinet doors or cabinet work, I highly suggest getting one. It's going to save you hours of time. Now that we've got that perfect fit, we're going to head over to the paint room and start painting everything. After four coats of paint on everything, which took me about two days, it's time to move on to the assembly portion. This is about the time where the project starts getting fun because I can see a light at the end of the tunnel. Now we are installing all of the hardware for the actual Murphy bed itself. And these are the brackets that mount to the heavy duty gas springs that allow the Murphy bed to go up and down. But we'll get to those in just a minute. We're going to finish up the actual cabinet build and then we're going to stand the bed up. We're able to mount the two heavy duty gas springs on the back side. Next we're going to move on to attach the rollers that mount to the top of the sliding bookshelves that cover the Murphy bed when it's not being used. Next I mount the rails that the bookcases will slide on. And if you're wondering, this is called a sliding bookcase hardware kit, and it's made specifically for this purpose here. And along with that kit, we also used a Murphy bed hardware kit. And I'll leave the links to both of those kits for you in the description below. Now it's time to go install this thing at my client's house. The very first step to all of our custom built-ins is to remove the baseboard. By removing the baseboards, it allows us to install the Murphy bed right up against the wall, giving it a more built-in feel. The back side of the Murphy bed is made up of three main pieces. The left side cabinet, the middle part, which is the Murphy bed itself, and then the right side cabinet. I'd like to take a quick moment just to admire how nicely that cabinet fits in there. Okay, back to work. Next, I'll install the tracks that the outside bookcases will slide on. The trick is to install one of the tracks, then put both bookcases on that one, and install the other track after that. Then you can slide your bookcase back over the other way. This allows you to have the rollers pre-installed on the bookcases, and it's going to save you a ton of time on the job site. Next, I want to cover up those tracks and rollers. It's going to give it a much cleaner look. This entire install took us about three hours to complete, but it did take about two weeks to build. Huge thank you for tuning in to our video, and I'll catch you guys next time.